The picture, they say what's a thousand words. And I feel like this sentence also applied to statistics. The process of using visual tools or data visualization tools to actually extract out details uh, from data sets is actually a quite important thing or process in statistics. It helps us to tell a thousand words or tell a lot of stories about the data. My name is Abefe, I am a YouTuber, a content creator, and a full-time tutor, and welcome to my learning space. <laughs> As stated earlier, the essence of descriptive statistics is to actually help us to process, to collect, to organize and analyze our data set. And basically, there are actually two ways we work with descriptive statistics. We have the visual measure and we have the numerical measure. Uh, for the visual measure, we use our graphs, we use charts, we use map and other details to actually uh, visualize our data to actually tell a story. While for the numerical measure, we make use of numerical analysis and uh, basic mathematics and algebra to actually work on our data sets. So when it comes to visual measure, we, we make use of tools like bar chart, we have pie chart, we have histogram, we have scatter plot, we have dot plot, we have dot plot rather, we have box plot and whiskers. Among those details, and when it comes to numerical analysis, we are going to be having details like the measure of central tendency, measure of central dispersion, which consists of, uh, the measure of central tendency rather consists of the mean, median, mode, and the measure of dispersion consists of the variance, the standard deviation, you know, the mean absolute deviation, and details like that. So the main purpose of this uh, video is to pay attention or start or kickstart descriptive statistics with the visual measure. And uh, like I said earlier, there are actually loads of them, but this video or this course rather will be focused on just, I think, five of them or six of them. I'll be talking about the frequency table, we have the bar chart, we have the pie chart, we have the histogram, we have the stem plot and leaf, and then we have the box plot and whiskers. And just like the thumbnail and the title of this video, we are going to be starting or be kickstarting the course of visual measure with the frequency table. So, let's talk about the frequency table. When we extract our data from the population or the sample, the data we have right now or at that moment is known as a raw data. So data from a population or a sample is actually in its raw form. And uh, whenever we have our data in the raw form, the first step is not for us to use uh, the visual tools just to jump into the bar chart or the histogram or the pie charts to start visualizing our data. The first step is to actually sort our data. And this is where the concept of the frequency table comes into it. Most times, or in fact, in my own opinion, I see the frequency table as more of a sorting tool rather than a, picture, a, a visual tool because it helps us to sort the data uh, from the population or the sample and uh, from there, after sorting our data the set, we can now use other details to actually visualize the data. And uh, I think I need to state it that all of the visual tools I mentioned, both the frequency table, the bar chart, the pie chart, the histogram, and all those uh, tools can actually be plotted using a lot of softwares. We can use Excel, we can use Python, we can use Minitab, we can use Tableau, we can use SPSS. And in fact, if you think like you don't know how to use any of these softwares that I just mentioned, there are actually sites on the internet that you can actually go into and they are going to help you to actually plot either of all of those things. So I am going to be linking those sites in the description below. Just check them out. And because these are the sites I use most times whenever I want to try to just quickly plot my bar chart, pie chart, or histogram. So with that said, let's move into our worksheet so we can get a lot of details about the frequency table and what it actually does. So let's talk about the frequency table. So the frequency table is just like a normal table that we have in mathematics. So this is what it looks like. So we have the horizontal line right here. Please pardon me, this is not too straight. And uh, we have the vertical line right here. And it simply implies that we've divided the, or we've divided the table rather into uh, two areas. We have the area to the left and the area to the right. So right here on the left, we have X, which represents the variable of interest. Now this variable of interest can either be a categorical variable or a numerical variable. And if you don't have uh, an idea of what a categorical and a numerical variable is, uh, with we have a video of that, so I'm going to be linking a video about that in the description, in the description rather, so you can just check it out. And then we have the frequency. So the frequency actually tells us the number of times a single variable uh, repeats itself. Okay, so uh, since the variable of interest can either be categorical or numerical, I'm going to be giving examples for both a 
categorical variable and a numerical variable so let's start with start of the categorical variable so for example i will assume that i go into a classroom and then i ask the student to tell me their favorite color so color in this case of ours is actually a categorical variable and that is because we can attach a number to color so let's assume i ask the student and uh, after a bit of interrogation uh five students tells me they like red color so that means the, the number of students that like red is five uh 10 students tell me they like blue so we have blue we have this to be 10 uh three students tells me they like black so black right here we have this to be three and seven students tell me they like pink so this is a seven right here so we have a frequency table and uh, this is now a full frequency distribution or a color distribution for students in this class so once again five students likes red uh, ten students like blue uh, three students like black and seven students like pink now if you decide to sum uh, the frequencies which we denote as um, summation f if you decide to sum the frequencies uh, we are going to be having the total number of students in the class so five plus ten that gives us fifteen fifteen plus three uh, that gives us 18 and 18 plus 7 that gives us 25 so it simply implies that in this class we have a total of 25 students right there so uh, let's talk about uh, the frequency distribution but this time our variable of interest is going to be uh, a numerical variable so let's also have our horizontal line so we have something like this and uh, we have uh, something like this excuse me uh, we, okay let me withdraw that this is not really straight so we have this exactly and then uh, we have this okay all right so we just have to manage it this way so our variable of interest is x our frequency is right here so uh our variable of interest right now is going to be uh, a numerical one so i can just decide to choose any one so i'm going to be using age so in this same class i decide to get the age of students in this class and uh, i was able to get the details that okay let's assume i was able to get the details that the minimum age in this class is actually 10 years and the maximum age in this class is 14 years so that means um, we have our variable, of, our variable of interest we have this to be 10 we have 11 we have 12 we have 13 and we have 14 so after speaking to the school management or after interacting with the, with the student i was able to have the following frequency distribution let's say i have something like two i have five i have seven i have three and i have four so this simply implies that in this class of ours, uh, ten student, uh, two students rather are actually ten years. Uh, five students are actually eleven years. Seven students are actually twelve years. Three students are thirteen years, and four students are actually uh, fourteen years old. So when we decide to sum the frequency, we are going to be having the total number of students in this class. So uh, we have a uh, two plus five, that is a uh, seven. 7 plus 7 that is 14 14 plus 3 that is 17 and 17 plus 4 that is a uh, 21 so that means in this class the total number of students is actually 21 so that being said so we have uh, a frequency distribution for color so we can call this uh, a color distribution and we can call this uh, age distribution so that being said let's talk about the type of a frequency table so we have two types of frequency table we have the one-way table and uh, we have the two-way table so far so good we've been talking about the one-way table and that is a table whereby you have just one variable of interest and then you have just uh, the corresponding frequency distribution by its side so for example we have just one variable right here and our variable right here is just color also right here the variable of interest right here is age so this is actually a one-way table uh, so but when we have the other one which is a two-way table a two-way table is you having two uh, variables with its corresponding uh, frequency distribution so i am going to have a sketch of what a two-way table looks like so the only time we actually use a two-way table is when we are trying to when we have two categorical variables so let's say for example we have a gender right here and uh, we have a type of movies so let's say we have type of movies so for gender we can have a uh, the male and we can have uh, the female right here and for the type of movies let's say we have a uh, let's say we have let's just draw this line right here okay so to demarcate this whole thing so for type of movies we can have action we can have sci-fi uh, we can have romantic comedy so let's just assume this so 
we have our two variables of interest we have the we have the type of movies to be one variable of interest which is a categorical variable and we have gender to be another variable of interest which is a categorical variable so let's just have a sketch of our table like this so so we have this right here all right so let's assume i fix a value here so 10 i have a value of 10 here i have a value of 15 right here i have a value of 7 right here i have a value of 12 right here I have a value of 3, I have a value of 6 right here. Now, the value of 10 simply implies that I have 10 males that loves action movie. Uh, the value of 15 implies that I have 15 females that love action movie. I have a value of 7 males that love sci-fi movie. I have a value of 12 males that loves... Uh, I have a value of 12 females rather than love sci-fi movies. I have a value of 3 males that love romantic comedy. And I have a value of 6 males, 6 females rather that loves uh, romantic comedy also we can also have a total so we can have something like this uh, so we have total right here we also have a uh, total right here so if we totalize this 10 plus 7 that is 17 17 plus 3 that is 20 uh, we have a uh, 15 plus 12 that is a uh, 27 27 plus 6 that is a uh, 33 so this is the total right here and here we have 10 plus 15 that is a uh, 25 and here we have 7 plus 12 that gives us 19 so it means that we have a total of uh, 20 males in this theater or wherever they are watching the movies and we have of a total of 33 females in this theater we also have a total of 25 people that loves action movie both male and female we have a total of 19 people that love sci-fi movies both male and female and we have a total of nine people that loves a romantic comedy exactly so we have a total of that so let's just ex extend this so we can have a grand total right now so uh 20 plus 33 uh gives us uh 55 excuse me that's a uh, 53 rather so this is 53 which is the grand total or we can say 25 plus 19 that gives us uh 44 44 plus 9 that also gives us 53 so the grand total that is the total number of people in this cinema or in this theater both male and female we have them to be 53 and this is a two-way table so once again a two-way table is best used when we are trying to relate to categorical variable or we are trying to draw the frequency uh, the frequency distribution rather of two categorical variable while uh, a one-way table uh, like this our uh, one-way table just needs just a single variable of interest and the corresponding frequency distribution and uh, for a one-way table the variable of interest can either be numerical or categorical but for a two-way table the, the, the uh, our variable of interest is going to be both of them must be uh, categorical variables rather so the one-way table is best used to plot pie charts bar charts histogram so the two-way table is actually best used to plot multiple bar charts so either we are talking about the component bar chart or the uh the stacked bar chart or the you know, grouped bar chart we are going to get to that in the next video so now that we've known that uh, we can have a two-way table and a one-way table so how does the frequency table actually sort our data for us so basically there are actually two ways in which your frequency table can sort your data for you and it can do that by sorting based on the variable or the score and it can also do that based on class so this is where it gets a bit interesting so whenever we are sorting our data based on score or variable we are talking about uh, something of this nature let's take for example the one way table for this age distribution so we have our, our variable of interest right here which is x which is age and uh, each of these at the variable we have 10 we have 11 we have 12 we have 13 we have 14 so each of those values here are known as a score and uh, it has its own corresponding frequency so this is actually uh, us grouping our data set based on score uh, most times whenever we group our data set based on score we are making reference to the fact that the variable of interest is numerical so we usually don't make reference to uh, a categorical variable when we are mentioning grouping your grouping our data based on score so when we hear the word grouping your data based on score it's actually making reference to a numerical uh, value in numerical variable so this uh, this age distribution of R simply implies that we've actually distributed excuse me we've actually grouped our data based on score and the score right here is 10 the scores right here are we have 10 we have 11 we have 12 we have 13 we have 14 so this is a typical example of a data set that has been grouped based on score so when we want to group our data sets based on group we are going to be having something of this nature so uh 
based on group we have uh, what we call a class so i'm going to draw something like this so let's assume in the whole school right now i decide to know the age distribution of students in the whole school so definitely i have a larger data set which is more of a population data set compared to when i focus on just the class so if i want to get the age distribution of students in the whole school uh, it may be stressful for me to use uh, the data sets at uh, the distribution based on score so i'll be having something of this nature so um we'll be seeing something like this so let's have excuse me let's have this So we have those right here. Um, excuse me. Okay, so so we are going to be having a lot of details. So we can have a lot of uh, lines as much as possible, but I'll just stop at two. So right here we are going to be having the class, also known as groups. Sometimes it is also called beans. Uh, I will explain why we call it beans as time goes on. And we have our frequency right here. So the only difference between our grouping our data based on score and based on class is the fact that instead of having individual scores right here, we are going to be having groups. So for example, instead of saying we have uh, 10, 11, 12, 13 like we had right here, we are going to be having groups of ages. So we are going to be seeing so those that fall between 5 to 10, those that fall between uh, 11 to 16 uh, okay those that fall between 17 to 22 those that fall between 23 down to 28 let me cross check if i'm right yeah so let's assume we ask the school management and they say okay between the age of 5 to 10 we have a total of uh, 50 students uh, between the age of 11 to 16 we have a total of 75 students between the age of 17 to 22 we have a total of you know 15 students and between the age of 63 and 28 we have a total of 10 students and this is actually uh, a frequency distribution but this time the data has been grouped based on class or groups or bin so each of those value right here 5 to 10 uh, 11 to 16 17 to 22 and 23 to 28 are actually known as a class so this is one class another class another class and another class and this is the frequency distribution and like we did earlier if we sum all of the frequencies right here we are going to be having the total number of students in that school so let's give it a try so 50 plus 75 that gives us 125 plus 15 that gives us 140 plus 10 that gives us 150 so we have a total of 150 students in this school so we have other details that we can attach to uh our frequency table when it is being used to group a data based on score and based on class we have details like the relative frequency we have details like the cumulative frequency uh, the class boundary the middle class and the load class interval and details like that but these are things that we're going to be talking about when we get to numerical measure so that is all for today if you really enjoyed this video a sub to the channel will actually be really appreciated i uh, thank you very much and have a nice day